After Avengers Endgame, the world drew its breath. Is this the end of Marvel? Will the comic book studio ever scale such cinematic heights again? Fear not, Marvel fans, for the Marvels is not only a triumphant return to form, but Marvel's masterpiece, a movie that makes Martin Scorsese stand back and say, gee whiz, why didn't I make this? Never before, and perhaps never again, will the world of cinema bear witness to a superhero film as masterful, majestic, and magnificent as the Marvels. Here is why Brie Larson's latest is Marvel's greatest. Before the Marvels, the MCU was awash with white heterosexual males. Iron Man, Iron is grey, yet Iron Man is more like the abominable snowman. America is the land of diversity, yet Captain America is Mr. White heteronormativity. The Incredible Hulk, incredibly white or incredibly green, but either way, incredibly privileged, male and obscene. Superhero pickings were slim for women and other oppressed minorities until... She's back! Brie Larson is pure screen arson. She sets fire to the screen like glycerine and lights up the MCU like the Griswold family Christmas tree. The marvellous captain is back and so are her luscious Goldilocks. In a flashback battle with the evil supreme intelligence, the AI rule of the Kree people, brains loses to beauty, brawn, and bigger brains. Queen Carol unplugs the super AI like a mother discovering what is on her teenage son's computer and plunges the Krees into civil war. The civil war is anything but civil. The Cree homeworld transforms into the Seattle Autonomous Zone, a barren wasteland and a breeding ground for villainy. The Cree's decree, forevermore Captain Marvel, will be called Annihilation. Wrong Rambo, for in 2023, Rambo looks like this. Monica Rambo. She's not an afterthought or an action juggernaut. She's an astronaut, and her name has a beautiful spelling. As is customary, she's the smartest, bravest, and strongest in the room, unless she's sharing the room with Brie Larson. Perfection cannot be surpassed, only equaled. When she's not kicking ass as a superpowered ass kicking astronaut, she's reaching for the Kleenex. Why is she crying? Is it because her mother died of cancer? People forgot she was in one division. No, because Auntie Carol left when she was a little girl and didn't come back until now. Small things matter to big strong women like Mama Rambo, Mambo, Mambo number five. Kamala Khan, or is it Kamala? Kama 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 Chameleon, Ms. Marvel is no Miss or Mrs. She's just business. The next in the next generation of strong, independent women superheroes. Before, superheroes had six packs, bulging biceps, or hopped off the couch at least once before donning the cape. Now, no bother, for Ms. Marvel is Ms. Every Woman. Every woman raiding the fridge. Whether size L, XL, or XXL, all women can now dream of fitting on the screen. When Ms. Marvel is not pounding quarter pounders, she's pounding bad hombres into the pavement and reeling off one liners like a super mutant Seinfeld. Where'd you learn to jump like that, Ninja Turtle? <laughs> Captain Marvel is the serious one, Ram Beautiful, the crying one, and Ms. Marvel, the funny, body positive one. Three heroes, three women, three paragons of virtue and diversity. One huge win for the modern world. The heroes in the Marvels are bastions of modernity. In recent Marvel tradition, the villains are bastards of white male villainy. Gore the Godbotherer, Jude Bowling Ball, <laughs> Modoc the Laughing Stock. If there is white male representation, it represents white male fragility. Nothing stands in the way of superpowered social justice. Marvel has evolved. Finding a white male in the Marvels is like finding a Pikachu illustrator card in a multi-story giant haystack. They didn't clone Tyrone, 
they deleted him. Cree advisor Tyrone's time on the screen is so fleeting, so finite, that one wonders if he is Bigfoot, Whitefoot, Tyrone, the unknown, a mythical white male creature in a world of magisterial multiculturalism. Instead of white male villains, there are villainous white male assistants making Stan Lee style cameos. Pray tell, then who is the big bad in the Marvels? A modern villain for a modern audience, Suprema Darben. Now then, who is this warrior Wonder Woman who checks more boxes than an Amazon warehouse? She is a Kree revolutionary on planet Hala who thirsts for revenge. Captain Marvel unplugged her planet's only computer and plunged the Kree people into everlasting darkness. Darben, the one to bring change. Her master plan, her villainous ambition, perhaps inspired by a night in with the DVD of Independence Day, to go on a planet shopping spree, stealing their natural resources. Darben is not Daft Ben. She knows there's only one thing that can stop the combined feminine power and energy of the three Marvel super ladies. A magic bangle and a magic hammer, the universal weapon. If it rips holes in the fabric of time and space, it may just be enough to put one of Captain Marvel's hairs out of place. Not only is it a universe ripper, it's a power nicker. When the Marvels use their powers against her, Darben steals them for herself. Captain Marvel made mincemeat out of Thanos, a Windows update out of the Supreme Intelligence, and a Frisbee out of Jude Law. Now she has finally met her match. A woman. A multicultural woman with multiple powers. First stop, Planet Tampax. <coughs> Tarnax. Darben rips a hole in the atmosphere of the Skrull refugee planet and sucks out the air. The devastation is devastating. The planet crumbles as Darben sucks harder and harder, blowing new life into her dying homeworld. The three Marvel tears evacuate the breathless scrolls and swear to put an end to any more sucking. If anyone must suck in the Marvels, it must be the Marvels. Buoyed by the Tarnax air, Darben desires an ocean. Enter planet Aladna. 99% covered in water, one may think they'd be happy to spare a few drops. But no, there is no water to go. The Marvels arrive first, ready to thwart Darben's dastardly pumping plan. The planet is not only a water planet, it is a musical planet. The people speak the language of song, and the Marvels becomes a bargain bin Broadway show. Upon greeting, they worship Captain Marvel, for on this planet, she is not just the universe's bossest girl boss, but a princess. A Disney princess. And her prince, not Lin-Manuel Miranda, but Prince Yan. In the comics, a white man, now a modern man, for modern sensibilities. Indeed, the whole planet, like all modern Marvel planets, is a multicultural mecca and a game of Where's Wally? Where's the white male? The Marvels ward off the water thief and save planet La La Land, but Darben sets her sights on the ultimate cosmic prize, the sun. Bye bye Earth, hello sun, sea, sex and sand on Hala, Ibifa is on the move, or not. Before she can whip out the tanning lotion, the Marvels whip her evil Kree ass, but as she kisses her ass goodbye, she steals Ms. Marvel's magic bracelet to rip the universe a new hole. Someone's going to have to fill it. Or ram it, Rambo rams hard, and the gaping hole snaps shut, saving the universe from cataclysmic catastrophe, but trapping her in another dimension. An X dimension. Her dead mother is alive, no longer her mother, and now part of the X-Men. Or should that be X-Women? The Marvels are down to two. The Big Bad had a Big Bang. There's only one thing left to do. Save the Kree people on Hala. Captain Marvel goes full nuclear man. She blasts into the core of Hala's sun and life instantly returns to the planet. <laughs> what do you know? That's right, all the plot, all the action, all the sacrifice could have been avoided if Bree the Brave had done this at the beginning. 
Well, better late than never. The Marvels had marveling to do. After five trips to the cinema, there is only one possible rating. Five stars out of five, The Marvels is Marvel's masterpiece. The casting a blueprint, a rainbow print for all future Marvel films to follow. Straight white males, straight out the door. All the characters, be them heroes or villains, or inspiringly inclusive and diverse. The action, a tribute to the true power of femininity realized. Marvel's latest is Marvel's greatest. Marvel is back.